This is for the ethics review class at Parker University. We've been talking about business entities. We've talked about sole proprietorships and partnerships, which are both very inexpensive to create, but also subject the owner to personal liability. The next type of business entity is a corporation. It costs a little bit more to set up a corporation. It's somewhat more than the 20 or $30 filing fee for an assumed name certificate. But the benefit of that expense is it helps protect the owners, the shareholders, from some personal liability or from personal liability for the activities of the corporation. Uh, now, the other downside of the corporation is it has a more complicated structure involving shareholders, directors, and officers. Now, in a small business, there may be one shareholder, and that one shareholder may also be a, the director, and that one shareholder may also be the president or officer of the company. But that, sh that person wears three different hats at different times, and they need to document decision-making for the corporation in an appropriate way for when they're wearing those three different hats. So the business corporation is defined as, as a separate entity. It's a fictional person in, in the eyes of the law. So a corporation can file lawsuits and a corporation can be sued. Uh, the advantages of a corporation is it makes it a little bit more attractive to investors, makes it easier to raise capital because the, uh, uh, there's no personal liability. Now, in the context of a chiropractic practice, there are very few situations where it's appropriate to be raising capital through investors. Uh, usually, it's more appropriate to borrow money uh, and to pay the money back. Uh, but the other advantage, as I mentioned previously, is it does provide for protection from, li from personal liability. Corporation may also, the ownership of the corporation may be easier to transfer than the ownership of a sole proprietorship or of a partnership. Uh, the disadvantage is it does cost somewhat more to organize. Uh, it can be subjected to, to some additional taxes unless the taxes are, are put together properly. And it does require some additional formalities to be followed. Uh, formation of a corporation is pretty straightforward. Uh, the incorporator is the person who is organizing the corporation. The document filed with the Secretary of State is a certificate of formation. In some states, they're called Articles of Incorporation and used to be called Articles of Incorporation in Texas. But the terminology today is Certificate of Formation. It's a fairly straightforward and simple document. You can find the document on the Secretary of State's website and fill the form out on your own if you choose to. But understand that filling out that Certificate of Formation in and of itself probably is not sufficient to protect the, give you that limited liability that you're looking for. The uh, registered agent is an individual or a business with an office or an address in Texas who is authorized to receive official mail and official notices and receive service of process for the corporation. One thing a lot of small businesses do is they forget to update their registered agent information. If you move your business, if your registered agent moves, you need to file an, a, a, a form with the Secretary of State to update that address. If you change to a different registered agent, you need to update that as well. Uh, registered agents can be individuals. In a typical small business, the owner of the business will be the registered agent. It's possible to hire companies to do that for you. It costs several hundred dollars a year. Uh, probably not worth it unless you're really trying to hide from process servers. The organizational minutes. Once the organization is filed, the certificate of formation is filed, the shareholders can meet and decide, here's how we're going to start the business. We're going to elect some directors. We're going to tell the directors, here are the bylaws that are going to govern the uh, uh, rights of the shareholders and the rights of the directors and the meetings by the directors. Um, and then the officers, uh, in some cases, it may just be a president. As I mentioned before, it may just be one person or it may be a number of people. So the fiction and, and what makes a corporation awkward for a small business is you've got the shareholder. You meet as a shareholder. 
and as a meeting of the shareholder, you elect yourself to the board of directors, and then you adjourn the meeting of the shareholders and call a meeting of the directors. And at the meeting of directors, you elect yourself as president and make decisions that are appropriate for the board of directors. It just doesn't make sense when it's just one person. And we'll talk about limited liability companies in the next uh, video, and that's probably more appropriate for most small businesses. Uh, corporation may also, if you have multiple owners, the uh, shareholders may sign a shareholders agreement. Uh, again, in one of the next videos, we'll talk about businesses with multiple owners, and the shareholders agreement should include the provisions uh, that are appropriate for a business with multiple owners. So here's the function of each of the, the groups. The shareholders elect the directors and receive an annual report on how the business is going. The directors elect the officers, they adopt broad policies, and they approve major or out of the ordinary decisions. The officers manage the day-to-day -day business under the supervision of the board of directors. One disadvantage to a corporation is it cannot make court appearances unless the corporation happens to be licensed as a lawyer. As a sole proprietor, the sole proprietor can show up and represent themselves in court. Or as a partnership, one of the partners can show up and represent the partnership in court. But once you create a corporation, you have a separate person. And unless the individual is licensed to practice law, they cannot represent the corporation in most courts. Now, most states like Texas have exceptions for the small claims courts, but once you get outside of the small claims courts, the uh, courts will not allow you to represent the corporation uh, on your own. Corporations should create a record book or a corporate minute book, and they should maintain information in that corporate minute book to show that they're following the formalities of a corporation. That can be an important book. Remember, the whole purpose of setting up this corporation was to create limited liability. But if the owners, the shareholders, are not following the formalities required for a corporation or appropriate for a corporation, creditors may come in later and question and challenge whether those shareholders should receive the benefit of that limited personal liability. So creating this kind of corporate minute book and maintaining it on, on a regular basis helps to uh, uh, substantiate that the business is being run like a real corporation and not being run without following the formalities. So of course, the first item is the, the certificate of formation. You should have a copy of what was filed with the Secretary of State. If the corporation is using any assumed names, if they're using names other than the corporate name. They need to file assumed name certificates with both the Secretary of State and with the county where they are doing business. And they should have records or copies of those certificates in this minute book. The uh, shareholders should adopt bylaws uh, and those bylaws should be part of the minute book. The directors should meet at least annually as well as the shareholders and there should be minutes of those meetings. Now, the first meeting might be a little bit more involved as new things are put into place. Uh, meetings in the future may be very short, but there should be some record that those meetings actually occurred, even if the meeting occurs with only one person. Uh, the minutes of the meetings should identify what information was disclosed in the meeting, what the discussion was, what the decisions were. So if you're meeting as one shareholder, it's going to be pretty short. The corporate minute book should include a record of the stock certificates, uh, which ones have been issued, who have they been issued to, and if they've been transferred, who have they been transferred to. If the shareholders are providing something other than cash for their initial investment, there should be a bill of sale showing that the property was transferred from the shareholder to the corporation's name. If the shareholders are putting up cash to purchase their stock certificates, the corporate minute book should include a record to substantiate that, that initial investment occurred. That should also include a copy of the IRS form where the application for employer ID was made. And it should also include a copy of the form 2553 if the corporation elected to be a subchapter S corporation. 
Subchapter S Corporation is the simplest way in terms of taxes. It creates a pass-through entity uh, where essentially the corporation is taxed like a partnership. The corporation itself does not pay any taxes. It files a information return and then the shareholders will pay income tax on the uh, their portion of the profits. If a corporation does not elect to be a subchapter S corporation, then the corporation is treated as a separate taxable entity and you run the risk that the profits may be taxed twice. They get taxed once when the corporation receives them and then when the corporation distributes those profits to the shareholders, the profits get taxed again. Uh, that's a situation you want to avoid. So for most small businesses, I mean, certainly this is something to discuss with a CPA or a tax advisor, but for most small businesses, the subchapter S election is going to be the best thing to do. And that election needs to be filed within a few months after the corporation is formed.